everyone. I am set up today in my garage slash makeshift potting up area, and we're gonna be talking about chitting potatoes and something that my old neighbor taught me a long time ago. And we're going to pot up in potato grow bags, so don't go anywhere. When I first moved to the Palisades, there was a man that lived across the street from me, and he had been there since 1961, raised his two daughters there, and he would grow the most amazing potatoes in containers in his front yard. The reason to chit a potato, that's C-H-I-T, a potato, is for an early harvest. You get the potatoes ready earlier and for people in short season climates, that's really a great thing to do. And there are all kinds of videos and information online about chitting potatoes, so you can check that out. But what he told me is, first of all, you want to chit a potato, meaning you cut it, you want at least a one inch square chunk. It's got to have at least one eye coming out of it. This only has one. It's better to have two and you cut it and normally you would let it sit in, say for example, an egg carton tray for a couple of days to seal over that cut. But if you wanna speed things up, he suggested pressing it into cornstarch. So we're gonna do that. It's very important, just like if you're pruning tomatoes, that you use a clean knife or scissors to prune tomatoes, you also want to use a clean knife to cut your potatoes. If you have a small potato like this, you just use the whole potato. You don't need to cut it. You could, but you don't need to. So I have all of these baking potatoes, and these were actually purchased from the store. They're organic heirloom baking potato. And these have two eyes but they're very close together. So you select your potatoes carefully. These have two eyes. These are called an eye. That's where your plant is gonna grow from. This just has one big one. So you see there's quite a variety. Okay, so here you have a potato that has one, two, three sizable and one smaller. So if you're really trying to stretch it and increase your yield, cut it so that you have the two eyes on one and the two eyes on the other. And normally this would take about two to three days to seal. And you want it to seal before you plant it. But if you don't want to wait and you're in a rush, you can seal it with cornstarch. And it's perfect. See? I love doing this. <laughs> now, normally you would put these in an egg carton like this with your eyes up and let them continue growing. Or you could go ahead and plant them now. I actually got these from Home Depot and they are very ready to plant, as you can see. Now this is a purple variety called All Blue, which I have planted in the past. I love blue potatoes, or purple. These are kind of stuck, and you want to be sure and not rip off those eyes trying to get them out of the container. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Now. These all seem to have one large eye or sprout. This is where your plant is going to come from. This actually has two good size ones. These have one each. I have three boxes of these and I'm going to plant them all. Purple vegetables, such as purple carrots, purple potatoes, purple beans, they all have more anthocyanins, which are cancer fighting. So I love to choose purple vegetables. In California, I had an extremely small garden with very limited growing space, limited sun, and very often I was growing on the driveway where the best thing you can use is a cloth pot. I used cloth pots for years and I've seen these potato 
cloth bags, but I had never used them. They specifically have a little window that when you suspect your potatoes might be ready or you wanna harvest new potatoes, you can open the flap and see if there are any potatoes growing down there. So I can't wait to try these. There's a great website called Gurney's. If you're not aware, they've been around since 1886 and selling plants and giving out information. And they've got a great growing potato video on their website and he had a 20 gallon cloth bag with six big potatoes in it. And so I am going to probably use between two large or three small potatoes in each one of these seven gallon bags. I am going to start with about six inches of soil, plant my potatoes with the eye up, the sprout up, cover with about two inches of soil. I'm going to add an all-purpose fertilizer with a little extra pot ash and fill them up twice before they finish growing. And as the green sprouts come up, they need support. And so you start low and those uh, green plants have the support of the sides as they get bigger and then you fill them up you kind of heal them up. It's the same difference as growing them in the ground where you're healing them up. And by the time you get, it gets to be full, and after they bloom, you can harvest any time after the bloom. Now, speaking of pot ash, it's not the same as wood ash, although it's very similar, but root vegetables need potassium, which is pot ash. And so I encourage you to read up on that. In general, nitrogen produces greenery and in the case of potatoes, you want to grow the roots or carrots or beets. You know, you want to encourage root development. For that, you need potash. You can certainly use wood ash in the garden and I have a lot of it. So I'm going to be adding a little bit of that to my Dr. Earth all-purpose tomato vegetable fertilizer. Sometimes you just use a portion of a bag. I'm going to use all of these, but <laughs> what you want to do is you want to Cut it almost to the end and then when you're done you just grab the top and you just wrap it around and tuck it in and you're done and you don't have to try to find some piece of planting tape or whatever to fasten it so when you open your bag don't rip the whole thing off <laughs> okay let's get this filled up i'm going to use this right out of the bag it looks like about enough to start. Now what you want to do is fold this down so you can see what you're doing. I like to make two neat folds when I start because when the plants start coming up you want them to get some sun. Now one thing to remember if you've never grown potatoes is you don't want them to be exposed to sun because if the tops get green that can be very toxic and you don't want to eat that. I've gotten the major clods out, which is always a good idea with root vegetables, especially carrots, to get all the lumps out. Because carrots, if they run into one little pebble, they will split. Another great way to do this is if you have a screen, a wire screen. I have my one from California but it's the quarter inch and it's too fine for this job. Now Dr. Earth's tomato vegetable food has a 463 rating meaning nitrogen is 4%, available phosphate is 6% and soluble pot ash is 3%. I came from California with my pot ash and I have lost track of it so Pot ash is very water soluble and if it gets wet, it won't work. <laughs> it is not effective. So it comes in a foil type package to keep the moisture out. I'm just gonna put a little bit of the tomato vegetable and I'm going to use some of my wood ash. I'm going to mix that in. And it's a great idea if you're using these 
containers to have saucers to put underneath them if you're using them anywhere in your house. The water does come down the sides. When you water here, it can come right out the sides and run all over your floor, so you don't want that. Okay, so I am going to put, in this bag, I'm going to use, I think I'm gonna use three potatoes because I'm very late in the season. I'm going to plant this about an inch down and I'm going to cover those stems. Can you see the stem? Yeah. This one has a double, but they're right together. And it's kind of going down, but you still need to put it down like this. So hopefully they'll turn around. I would consider this a small potato, so I'm using three. Now you can't really see those two pieces, they're kind of buried, but here are these two. And we're going to cover it with two inches of soil. It's a great idea to do this before it comes right out of the bag because sometimes it's just so many clumps there. And this you can already see is poking out because it is so high. And that's all we do for now, except for watering. So that's the process, and now I'm just going to repeat that five times. It's a great idea to do succession planting, especially when you're doing containers. It's very easy to do. You just start a week early, you, you wait a couple of weeks, you start another batch. And so I'm gonna have five of these pots just with the all blue purple potatoes, and then I have other seven gallon grow bags, and in a couple of weeks I'm gonna start the rest of my potatoes. So we're just gonna finish up. I've only got five potatoes left. I put one too many in one of the others, I think. Uh, so I'm gonna take the two largest ones and save for my last bag and put these three little ones in this bag and hope for the best. There's really nothing simpler than planting potatoes. <laughs> Two more quick tips for possibly more successful plantings. I start out with filtered water because tap water or city water can kill the beneficial bacteria and organisms in the soil. I also like to add MycoGrow, which is made by Fungi.com, and this is soluble mycorrhizae comprehensive blend of endo and ecto mycorrhizae beneficial bacteria and biological disease control organisms. There is nothing for me better than that. Thanks so much for watching this channel, liking my videos, and especially sharing them with your friends. And if you are a late bloomer like me starting over, I hope you'll subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing everyone in the next video.